Lee Clinic set up as screening centres. COVID-19 awareness underway in Medang. And WHO says coronavirus can be contained. This is the National MTV News with Helen Sayer. Good evening and thanks for joining us for Tuesday's news. The Milford Haven and Buemo Road clinics have been set up as coronavirus and public screening units for Morbe. Doctor in charge Dr Lincoln Menda says this will be where patients showing symptoms will be brought before further actions are taken. The Milford Haven and Buemo Road clinics will be used as public screening units in Morabe. According to Dr. Lincoln Menda, these clinics will not be functioning as urban clinics. They will be fully utilized for coronavirus operations. We have removed all its functions, had it shared by the other city clinics, and we have established that two clinics specifically to look at influenza-like illnesses. The Morabe Provincial Health Authorities, Port Authorities and other stakeholders will be conducting surveillance at identified entry points into the province. Patients found with fever, cough or shortness of breath will be screened at the Milford Haven and Wimmer Road clinics. If possible cases are identified, samples will be taken and sent to the Medical Research Institute in Goroka. Those that fit uh, into the description of coronavirus, there are certain things we do and one of that is the swab that we get, we get specimens from the oropharynx up in the throat. The chapel here at Enga will serve as an isolation center for patients if coronavirus or COVID-19 positive cases are found. They have agreed that we'll be using this place for a screening of those patients we've had suspect case here and if we need to isolate them, we will probably do it here for a time being. Lucy Kopana, National MTV News, Lay. The Medang coronavirus team has started carrying out awareness in the province. Interim chairman of the response team, Dr. Martin Damien, says a team was sent to Basamuk at the Ramu Nickel refinery site and surrounding communities, while the other team went to Bogia to where the Bunabun logging camp is and the neighboring communities. The team spoke on the virus, the symptoms and signs, how it is contracted and the preventative measures one needs to take. The team, however, needs funds to continue its awareness programs into the rural areas of Medang province. They have also covered RD Tuna and PNG ports in Medang, but the team will also be doing awareness in tertiary institutions. For now, the team needs funds to continue carrying out awareness into other parts of the province. We are still yet to get some funding from uh, Medang provincial uh, government as well as. Uh, we have asked uh, Medang Provincial Health Authority as well. We have promised to give us some funds. Uh, that has not come yet. Uh, once we have funds, we can also uh, look at uh, setting up our or purchasing some equipments if the need be. Another challenge on hand is for the purchasing of new equipment like face masks and gloves for the team to carry out quarantine activities. For now, the team is not able to do any quarantine activities, especially on ships and other vessels coming into meeting waters. We are not able to do any quarantine activities, especially for the ships, vessels that are coming to uh, from China to Basamuk or to RD uh, fishing as well as the lock ponds uh, basically because we don't have the equipment to carry on our quarantine activities so we are going by the uh, gadget by the Department of Transport to direct all vessel to other ports like Lay but must be or about for quarantine activities before they come to Medang. So we will still go by that until in such a time where uh, our officers here are trained and equipped and when the farms are ready to support us, we can uh, carry on the uh, quarantine activities in Medang. 
However, the coronavirus response team for Medeng has carried out awareness at Basamuk and Bogia through the support given by the Chinese community in Medeng. Last month, Ramunikul gave 10,000 kina in cash to help carry out awareness and to set up civilians at entry points into the province. The team was set up to beef up civilians and to explain to the people various symptoms of the virus if and when it enters PNG shores. The team is yet to receive funding from the Medeng provincial government. Martha Louise, National and TV News, Medeng. Acting Secretary Dr. Paisen Dakulala has warned members of the public to not spread fake news and cause panic. Dr. Dakulala issued a statement following a recent social media post that sparked concerns. The fake news claimed there were two confirmed cases at Port Moresby General Hospital. Dr. Dakulala said when news of a confirmed case does come about, it will be confirmed by his technical team, then the minister, whereby the minister will make an announcement to the media. Team come up to me and then it will go to the minister who will then make the declaration. So from the minister, the, the positive case will be declared. So everyone else, everyone else, no. You know, so but it will come through that kind of process. And 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 eventually at the end of it all, our minister will make that call. We had gone through a similar, you know, almost there, and we had to go through understanding the, the particular case that we were concerned about, and our minister was very interested in that. So we went through until they gave us the result, and then we told our minister, and, and so we were not able to, you know, like, <coughs> we were clear that that was negative. But eventually, end, end of it all, the minister will make that declaration that there's a positive case or not. Despite the rapid spread of coronavirus, the World Health Organization says if nations act fast, coronavirus can be contained. Here's a look at how the continent is clamping down. A unifying war cry from the World Health Organization. We have a common enemy now. To fight a global threat. We are in uncharted territory. We have never seen before a, resp a, resp a respiratory pathogen that's capable of community transmission, but at the same time, which can also be contained with the right measures. Europe has raised its state of alert. The risk level has risen from moderate to high for people in the European Union. Italy's deadly outbreak is escalating. 1,700 confirmed cases, more than 50 deaths, as several cities remain in lockdown. In France, three deaths and 60 new cases triggering more emergency measures. In France, we are in phase two with a very clear objective, which is to prevent the spread of the virus. In Britain, MPs and medical experts were summoned to draw up a battle plan. Already 39 cases are confirmed right across the UK. The most important thing now is that we prepare against a, a possible very significant expansion of coronavirus in the UK population. The gates were shut at this prestigious London school, one of many forced to close after one of its staff members today tested positive. The teacher travelled to Italy and fell ill and was at school last Monday, a teacher's only day, so did not have contact with students. But staff members who were in contact with the individual have been told to self-isolate for two weeks. World experts insist containing coronavirus is still possible. Surrendering, I don't think, is, is, is right. But only if the world fights its common enemy together. The rapidly escalating numbers of coronavirus cases outside of China is raising global alarm. This CNN report shows there have been almost nine times more new cases reported outside than inside China. South Korea, Italy, Iran and Japan are the World Health Organization's greatest concerns right now. Worldwide, meantime, the number of infections stands at more than 89,000 and more than 3,000 people have died. But WHO says there is still time to stop the surging epidemic if we put the right measures in place. Take a listen. 
We are in uncharted territory. We have never seen before a, resp a, res a respiratory pathogen that's capable of community transmission, but at the same time, which can also be contained with the right measures. Now, Indonesia, the world's largest Muslim-majority nation, has become one of the latest countries to announce its first cases. And remember, the vulnerability there is in its medical facilities. In Europe, meantime, the EU has boosted the risk level for the virus from moderate to high. The number of confirmed cases in Europe now tops 2,000, with Italy being affected. Uh, the most. In Iran, meantime, an, adv an advisor to Supreme Leader Ayatollah Ali Khomeini has died after getting infected with coronavirus, and that is according to state radio. In Iran, they are still trying to deal with an evolving situation. In South Korea, meantime, the leader of a Christian sect is apologizing for the role his members played in spreading the coronavirus in that country. Now, in terms of it may be counterintuitive, but now U.S. stocks, meantime, rebounded sharply on Monday with the Dow logging its single day largest point gain in history. You heard me right. Markets worldwide plunged last week as coronavirus fears grew. But now many people are counting on the central banks around the world to come to the rescue. This is National MTV News. Among stories uh, after the break, Goroka open by election and plans to upgrade Kaviang and Kyunga airports. Details after the break. Welcome back. The Supreme Court has dismissed an application for review filed by Henry Ame concerning the Goroka open seat. Justice Gavera Nanu had ordered a by-election for the Goroka open seat following a petition filed by former member for Goroka Bira Kimisopa. Aggrieved by this decision, Henry Ame filed an application for review in the Supreme Court to challenge the National Court's decision. This morning, the Supreme Court upheld the application by Bira Kimisopa based on instances of non-compliance of court orders and failing to prosecute the review with due diligence. The stay order of 9th May 2019 stayed the vacancy in the Goroka open seat. This means there is a vacancy and a by-election ordered by the Supreme Court. The member-elect for Goroka Open, Henry Ames, spoke to MTV this afternoon. He has welcomed the ruling by the Supreme Court for a by-election. Mr. Ames stating it is unfortunate for the people as the court proceedings will continue to delay services. He says he had asked for a review by the Supreme Court due to by-election not being a part of what the original petition was sought for. Mr. Ame calling on the people of Goroka to be calm and await the by-election, adding he may look at the judiciary process based on the advice of his lawyers. Just to get your opinion. Uh, on what we might do, uh, if there is a possibility of going any further in the uh, judiciary system, then we might take that option too. But, uh, you know, uh, for a start, the decision is made by the courts. I accept the decision. Um, if they're going to be the by-election, by then let's live by it. I'm happy to go and face the people again. The people will decide whether to return me or bring in another person. Keep calm. I don't want them to be doing anything that I wouldn't want them to do. If the court has made the decision, so that we respect the law and uh, we, 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 we just go by the law. Uh, so I appeal to my people in Goroka, uh, you know, we don't need to do anything. Uh, the, the, the court has decided, so uh, let's uh, abide by the laws. Let's be good citizens of uh, Goroka, Papua New Guinea, and let the uh, uh, law rule. The government has no plans to regulate the media, however, will be forced to if media organizations lack self-regulation. This came as more of a reminder than a warning from then acting Prime Minister David Stephen last week at a media workshop in Port Moresby. Charlene Airy with this report. 
The deputy PM statement now challenges head of media organizations to consistently maintain self-regulation processes so as to uphold the role of the media to provide accurate, balanced and impartial content. He was the guest speaker at a media workshop on the fundamentals of quality journalism, which saw the participation of journalists throughout the country and the autonomous region of Bougainville. The workshop brought to light harsh realities of PNG journalists who must uphold their integrity on the backdrop of cultural obligations that cannot be brushed aside. Being the faces of the media organizations that they represent, journalists are also challenged by the deputy PM statement. There's no bill proposed to, uh, to, to, to deal with uh, regulate the mainstream legislation that uh, that, that uh, protect and, and establish the media or the freedoms that we have now. You are not a threat. Uh, I hope that the um, Marapistian government will, will work much better with, with you, with your council, to try to generate discussion on, on where we can strengthen our relationships and, and how we can help uh, to improve the uh, you know, the, the sectors, the different sectors for the betterment of our country and in the interest of going forward. Although not having plans to regulate mainstream media, the Deputy Prime Minister said social media is a concern for the government. In the area where government is interested is in the area of social media. You have your media council, and I'm, I'm, I don't know how it works, but one of the functions should be to regulate the conduct, the professional standards, and also deal with those who offend against those ethical standards. But if you're not doing it, then society will be forced to, to get leaders to respond to that issue. And if that, if we were to come to that, then my, my, my uh, department steps in. That's where legal policy comes in. How many of you are, are actually operating a blog? Well, I'd like to join. Because there I might see the passing on or the transmission of the same ethical standard and, and professional standards onto that, that, that space, which is now becoming the dominant space. So that's the challenge I face as a, as a lawmaker. The Deputy Prime Minister said the government recognizes the media's role in achieving national goals and wants more collaboration with the PNG Media Council moving forward. Charlene Airy, National MTV News. Former emergency controller Dr. Bill Hambling has reached out to the media regarding claims made against him. The article published in one of the dailies stated that Hela Governor Philip Undialu has called on the government to institute a commission of inquiry into the use of the 2019 Highlands Earthquake Disaster Funds. As reported by the Daily, Governor Ondialu stated that his province only received 1.5 million kina and he wanted to know where the rest of the money went and singled out Dr. Hamblin to explain. Dr. Hamblin stated that Hela province has received all their money and it is in the Hela sub trust account under the emergency trust. The governor knows that these accusations are patently untrue. Former emergency controller Dr. Bill Hamblin has come out clear about the quake funds after Hela Governor Philip Undialu's comments on clarification of quake funds reported on one of the dailies. Governor Undialu made three specific claims that Dr. Hamblin believes are not true and politically motivated. Dr. Hamblin stated that the $116 million provided to the controller was an NEC decision, 54-2018, which was an interim budget of 150 million kina to address immediate emergency response. Dr. Hamblin emphasized that this decision was made and passed before he entered the scene. The above funds were to come from Kumul Petroleum, 100 million, and 50 million from Octeti. After a great deal of frustration over funding delivery, uh, only 100 million of that 150 million 
was provided. Former emergency controller Dr. Hamblin said Governor Undialu was at the meeting when he presented a summary of the emergency expenditure by category. With the road projects, NEC had agreed that line agencies would deliver services, certify claims, and the controller's office would then approve and control expenditure from the trust account. The governor indicated at the meeting with the then Prime Minister that he wanted to see details of the road projects being undertaken in Heller. The Minister for Works and Implementation, who was present at the meeting, invited the governor to see him for details. Dr. Hemlin says there were situations where large amounts of funds were being committed for road rehabilitation against the emergency budget without approval from the controller's office. Most of these costs were accommodation, car hire, fuel and travel allowance. Accommodation was booked at a daily rate and car hire was at 800 kina to 1,000 kina per day. Even when I bought five new police vehicles for each province and another five vehicles for the PNGF, the number of vehicles hired did not decrease. The governor also indicated that the emergency controller failed to repair social infrastructure. Dr. Hamlin states that this is a political misdirection. The controller was to, was to concentrate on relief and recovery activities, not restoration. Dr. Hamblin stated clearly that the 50 million US dollar World Bank loan has been distributed as follows. Hela Province, 75 million kina. Southern Highlands Province, 50 million kina. Western Province, 10 million kina. Enga Province, 20 million kina. Gulf Province, 5 million kina. And Telefomen, 5 million kina. The governor has that money, his portion of it, in the trust account, under Hela Sub Trust account, under the emergency trust. He's had that, and he got a finance instruction, his PA would know, a uh, finance instruction of how that was to be spent on projects. Lillian Sopera Kinea, National MTV News. A newly built rural health post in Poroi Village is hoped to improve health services in this part of Gulf Province. The health post will ease the burden of communities along the Purari River who paddle for miles to access health services. The health post was opened by Total Managing Director, Gulf Governor Chris Haiveta and other stakeholders. For more than 20 years, people travel by dugout canoes and pedal along the river to access health services. Through a partnership between Total, the Gulf Provincial Government, MRDC and others, the health post was built. Governor Chris Iveta says health is crucial to reach rural communities. In a way, what the partnership is helping is that it is also helping, it, it's initiating projects, but it is also helping the provincial government deliver. Uh, in, uh, on, its, on the commitments it is making. The partnership has been three years in the project area. Developer Total, Digicel Foundation and Segal Network all agreed to continue build proper health facility for communities. The head post has an examination room, drug storage and consultation desk. Offering much needed services to all of you here in Evera and your neighboring villages. So this is a fine example of how we developers and the provincial development can and should work together in the future. Poroi village is situated along the Purari River in the Kikuri district of Gulf Province. For the local board councillor, the facility is a relief to mothers, children and even men who travel for miles to reach other health facilities in the province. How we play stuff? Um, you know that one plus plus service you come inside, but once the total um, come inside and um, um, look look what's um, need long community and need long one um, inside long basis and um, we work long helping me plan long good way. A similar occasion was also witnessed in Evara village along Purari River. For Evara village, a new dinghy and motor, including medical supplies worth 10,000 kina, were presented. The boat will be used to transport referrals or patients to Kerama or Kopuna Health Center. I have a good facility here and I am more than happy today. Uh, the delivery of drug cartons is uh, 11, one out of 11. And it's a good number and I'm very much proud that this medicine will help my people and save them. 
at this rural location. All right. Jack LaPava, Jr. National M, TV News. The National Airports Corporation signed two contracts for Kaviang and Kyunga Airports this morning at Government House. The contracts were for the rehabilitation and maintenance of these two airports. Since 2009, the National Airports Corporation, through the government of Papua New Guinea, has been receiving assistance from Asian Development Bank's multi-trans financing facility to redevelop its deteriorating civil aviation infrastructure in Papua New Guinea. Through continued partnership between the government and ADB, funds were made available for these airport upgrading projects to be carried out. The first contract signed was between the state, the contractor, Associated Builders and Contractors Limited, and the National National Airports Corporation for the supply and installation of security fencing and associated works for Kyunga Airport. The project is set to cost more than 10 million kina, will include supply and installation of palisade security fencing. The second contract signing was between the state, the contractor, China Railway Construction Engineering Group and the National Airports Corporation. This project is set to cost more than 91 million kina and will include building a new state-of-the-art terminal building, aircraft pavement strengthening for caving airport, runway extension and associated works. The contracts were awarded to the two contractors in the presence of the Governor General, Sebob Dadai. Michelle Steven, National MTV News. National MTV News continues with more after these messages. Stay with us. Welcome back to the news. Over the years, successive governments have been trying to improve its educational system with policies for quality education. However, this has been an issue of concern raised by students, parents and members of the public due to a lack of classrooms, teachers and basic facilities. Lay, like other districts, is trying to provide quality education in schools through public-private partnership programs. This is the type of setup inside the classroom of Butibam Primary School in Leh, an urban district of Morbe. While some students and teachers in the rural areas are still struggling to teach and learn in environments that's not conducive to learning, the successive governments have come up with policies to strengthen the education system in providing quality education through the free education policy. However, they have failed in providing the quality, according to lay MP John Russell. Free education is good. It's a right for everyone and good for something. But at the same time, it brings its problems. When you are a very rich country with no problems and everything works properly, then you get free education. You say free education, now organize something. If you have good teachers' houses, if you have good facilities, you've got library, you've got organize something and then you put in free education on top. That you get quality education. It is no point getting education when you have substandard education. That is a crime. It's not good. We do not deserve to give you children that. As a government, it is irresponsible to give free education or mouse, fire up nothing, or something, you know, come up through through. The statement made by Rosso was raised yesterday during the handing over of school items, including 420 desks desktop computers and cabinets to the Butiban Primary School by a lay-based company, Islands Petroleum. The items were purchased through funds raised by the Islands Petroleum Color Run annual event that was sponsored by the companies including Tricer Transport, MRDC, ESS and others. More than 93,000 kina was raised. Butiban Primary School follows Milford Avenue Primary School and the Milford Haven Clinic is the third recipient. This is the run and by continue long all sample uh, EA come yet. Now me place I long lay yet, me place I target in all schools, now health centers. Because me play believe all some, all young people you me, only must help it. Long go long school, now only must, time only school, only must use him all good plus something. Also, you can witness him today. Children with good character, built on high moral and ethical standards, will make PNG a better place and the world a safer place. Good character is more important than academic. 
education. While the concern of quality education is still an issue, the education department emphasized on removing elementary schools and to implement the 166 government policy. This means children will start off with early childhood learning and then to grades 1 to 6 and 7 to 12. Meanwhile, there are not enough classrooms, teachers and basic facilities. Julie Badui Owa, National MTV News, Lay. Turning overseas now, footage has emerged showing the Greek Coast Guard shooting into the water and using their patrol boats to push away dinghies full of migrants trying to reach Greece. Thousands of refugees are gathering at the country's border with Turkey after Turkey announced it no longer stopped them from entering the European Union. In the eastern Aegean, migrant lives are bargaining chips and cheap. It was filmed by the Turkish Coast Guard and shows Greek boats trying to stop a packed dinghy of migrants reaching Europe. Imagine the fear on board, unwanted by Turkey or by Greece. Those are warning shots being fired at a flimsy, inflatable dinghy. Not everyone makes it. Just this morning, a young migrant boy drowned when his dinghy, a different one, capsized. He's one of a rising number who have, with Turkey's encouragement, tried to reach the Greek islands over the last few days. The direct human consequence of Ankara's demand that Europe come to its aid in Syria. On land, things are no better. There have been riots at Greece's border with Turkey after thousands of migrants were mobilized to march right up to the fence. And some have got through. Greece has changed the rules so that if migrants get caught now, they don't get processed here, they get sent straight back. It means that some of them are hiding. So we've just seen what looks like a couple of migrants over here. They run off, and we eventually find them hiding in some bushes. The police. Okay. The police. I'm not the police, okay? They're Syrians from Aleppo, Hassan and Ahmed. Two you guess? Yes, yes. Tired and still shell-shocked from crossing the border. Moments later, we're disturbed, and they move off once again on the run in a country that's increasingly hostile to their presence. Up next, some sporting updates in Chukai Sports. Don't go away. Chukai Sports. Welcome to Chukai Sports. The Sogeri Township Soccer Association held its grand final for the 2019 to 2020 season over the weekend. Sogeri Choice won the women's while Koki Park took out the men's division title under wet conditions. The rainy condition proved a test of the Titans as the two teams, Koki Park in green, do battle with Madinumu in grey. With the extra elements of nature in play, mud and water, it was a slippery encounter. The two teams locked horns a goal apiece, heading into full time. Extra time came by quickly, scoreless both teams faced the faith of a penalty shootout decider. Every goal had its celebration in the local league, but it was the Koki Park goalkeeper who was in the limelight with his exceptional saves. His teammates ensured the match was sealed with a 4-2 victory. Yes, I am a strulo. Team don't play the game. I am a challenging game. We play play. Thank you, Lord. Boys, play me. Play nice play game. Play on the more. Brothers, don't play Lord. Choice. 
In the women's division, Sogeri Choice edged out Yarrowari 1 nil to take out the crown. It's a dream come true for me for seeing the youth and mothers, especially taking part in sports. And I have to say thank you to all the sponsors because, because of their behaviors and etc. The game has ended successfully. And I'm the happiest man on the ground with my executives for giving their time to us supporting this association. At the same level, I'm all youth. Okay, it is important to participate in uh, meaningful engagements like sports and uh, other areas. The association's grand final comes 11 weeks after competition proper. Bradley Valenaki, National MTV Sports. The second annual Hevea Rugby League Cup and Wellness Expo hosted by the Grasscut Project will kick off this Thursday with 24 teams registered for the competition. Organizations involved with health and well-being will be available for the Expo, which runs concurrently with the Nines tournament. Entry is to Kina, with the Expo and Rugby League matches to be hosted at the All Search National Football Stadium. The Hevea Cup Carnival is into its second year and will be hosting the Nines tournament, which coincides with its Health and Wellness Expo. David Wesley, in charge of Rugby League and the overall competition, says the sport of Rugby League will be used to address the Health Expo, which starts on the 5th to the 7th of March at the Oil Search National Football Stadium. This Expo is the, probably the major part of this tournament, but um, to do that we're using Rugby League as a tool. Um, it's a national sport, so pretty much everyone follows and loves uh, Rugby League in this country. Founder and CEO of Grasscat Project, Tahina Booth, says 24 teams have registered with 12 men's and 12 women's teams, respectively. The teams will be wearing jerseys designed by PNG artists. Every single team pays 5,000 kina to enter. We give them a full set of uniforms, which they get to keep at the end, and they can do whatever they like with those uniforms. David Wesley goes out into their community to run rugby league workshops, and we also talk about gender equality, um, and every single team receives uh, PIH health checks. David Wesley says he had been out to visit all the teams, providing them with some training. And my job is to go to all the teams and run coaching workshops. So this year we uh, we ran defensive sessions. So um, just on last year and my experience of watching teams um, uh, in my in my involvement with rugby league, I thought uh, we work on defence this year. And the matches and the health expo will start on Thursday and end on Saturday, with a chance for those attending to win prizes on offer donated by Brian Bell, including shopping vouchers, with the entry fee to Kina. Just before the finals, we'll pull out um, out of the barrel uh, 10 lucky winners that will win up to 50,000 Kina worth of prizes donated from Brian Bell Group and um, other sponsors as well. Brian Bell is excited again this year to join the Hevea Cup competition and wellness expo. The guys are doing a great job um, trying to improve health and social outcomes for communities right across PNG by facilitating engagement in education uh, about major health issues affecting people in PNG, particularly those being experienced by women. Ferry Sukina National MTV Sports. Chukai Sports continues with more after these messages. Stay with us. Trukai Sports. Welcome back to Trukai Sports. In cricket, Boramana have booked a grand finals berth after defeating Butuka in the semi finals of the Kirakira Ogo T20 cricket competition. The 111 run victory came off good innings in batting that ensured the bowling followed on. Boremana Hunters in grey took an early lead from the allotted 20 overs, leaving Butuka in red facing an uphill battle. To win, Butuka needed to score 207. The betting was swift, with the man on the crease scoring quick singles in between. However, chasing a scoreline of over two centuries pushed the batsmen out of their comfort zone to play shots that eventually led to the downfall. The middle order stumbled quickly and the team's bottom order had less firepower in the tank for Butuka. At the 16 over mark, they were all out for 95. A massive 111 run victory for Boremana Hunters. So the betting side was uh, really good. We stick to our plan. 
uh, our target was 150 and above, so in 20 hours we scored 200 runs, so great effort to the boys. It's been a struggle, you know, with nothing in our pockets, uh, with uh, faith in, in our God, we, we've done it, you know. After seven years of this team, absent this team, we've done it, I believe we've done it, and we're looking forward to the grand final. The association grand final will be played over the weekend between Boremana and Ogoniva. Bradley Valenaki, National MTV Sports. Port Moresby's regular squash tournament will start in the next few weeks at the Port Moresby Rackets Club. They expect to have a good number of players and teams registering for this season. The tournament will run for six weeks. Uh, we've got the regular season coming up in March where, again, corporate bodies can put in their teams. It'll, the, the comp will run for about six weeks. So um, um, that, again, was, was good in this, in this instance because now corporate bodies know they can actually play squash. So they're, they're quite happy to put in a squash team for the next seasonal comp. So we're looking forward to new teams into the squash comp season. Um, for squash, again, we will have the juniors traveling in June for the... Australia Junior Open and the Queensland Junior Championships. Um, there will be juniors again going for that. That again, the funds we raised during this tournament that will partially go to that as well. The, the biggest tournament where, where our juniors will be going to is the World Juniors Championships that will be held in Gold Coast. And that ends Shukai Sports. The weather details coming up next. Shukai Sports. True Kai Sports. This weather update is proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. A look at the weather forecast for tonight and tomorrow in the southern region. Chances of evening showers in Port Moresby, cloudy with rain showers in Daru and Kerma, and mostly fine weather in Alatau and Popandita. In the Mamasu region, cloudy with evening showers and nightly showers in Lei. Partly cloudy but fine in Medang. Chances of rain showers in Wewak and Vanimore. In the New Guinea Islands region, chances of morning showers in Lorengau, chances of a few showers in Kaviang, rain showers in Kokopo and Rubal, chances of a shower or two in Kimbe and mostly fine weather in Buka. And in the Highlands region, cloudy with rain showers in Mount Hagen, Mendi and Wabeg, a chance of some showers then morning fog in Goroka and Kundiawa. Forecast for small crafts for the next 24 hours. Waters of southern PNG Indonesian border through Taurus, through to Daru, to Yule Island, to Hood Point, and Aroma Coast. Seas of 0 0.5 to 1.3 meters. Waters of Samaria Island and eastern and western Melbay Islands, with waters of East Cape to Cape Vogel to Finchhafen, including waters of Finchhafen through Vitias and Dampier Straits. To Siasi Islands, Long Island, with waters of Long Island to Medjang to Bogia, with waters of Wewak to Aitape to northern PNG Indonesian border, with waters of Manus and its western group of islands, and with waters of New Ireland, east and west New Britain, and Bougainville seas of 0 0.5 to 1 meter. Of the ocean forecast the PNG areas in the Coral Sea seas slight with a northeast to southeast winds at 10 to 15 knots. In the Solomon Sea seas slight with east to southeast winds at 5 to 10 knots. In the Bismarck Sea seas slight with northwest to northeast winds at 5 to 10 knots. And in the Pacific Ocean sea slight with north to northeast winds at 5 to 10 knots.
The weather update was proudly brought to you by Money Plus. With you always. And that's the way it is this Tuesday, the 3rd of March 2020. From the entire MTV News team, a pleasant viewing. Good night.